I would like to now introduce our first speaker. And our first speaker is Ms. Kara Dunn, who recently completed a master's in communication and is currently a graduate student in our EDD program. Please join me in welcoming Kara. Hi everyone, thank you so much for that introduction. Um, and thank you to all of you most importantly for braving our humidity today to be here. So today I'm going to be presenting to you all on a discovery that I myself made and it's a very passionate project of mine. And that is on the concept of major shaming in undergraduate college students. So just a brief introduction, I work as an academic advisor here at USI's College of Nursing and Health Professions. So within this job, I hear from students daily and I hear what their major preferences are and why they are that. So what that means is I hear a lot about healthcare, a lot about healthcare and STEM and how overall students feel that they should go into these fields regardless of their passion in those fields. Now, just a background about me personally, I graduated with my Bachelor of Arts in Communication from Hanover College in 2018, and then my Master of Arts in Communication just last year in 2022. So this research that I'm presenting to you all on today is actually my thesis for my master's project in which I had an amazing thesis advisor, Dr. Jessica Rick, who's here today. And she really helped me get my ideas on pen and paper and led me to being in this presentation today. And then last but not least, I am currently a doctoral student in the education program here at USI, where I hope to expand on these ideas and just identify what education um, and administrators can do a little bit more specifically within this topic. So I have a question here on the board. And this question in itself was my passion for doing this project. What are you going to do with that major? Please raise your hand, whether you are an administrator or a student or faculty, raise your hand if you've ever been asked this question. I get asked this all the time. All the time, right? Now, raise your hand again if you've ever responded to this question and potentially felt a little shamed or a little judged, right? A lot of us. So this was my main passion for why is it that some majors are seen as being more beneficial to society than others? Now, as a communication major in undergrad, people don't really know what communication majors want to do, right? They don't know what that field is. They think instead, maybe we just want to talk. And yes, I do love to talk, but there's a whole lot more to the field than just that. So when I was asked what I was going to major in in undergrad and even in graduate school, you know, I got some mixed responses of people that didn't quite know what that major was all about. Whereas in comparison, my now husband was a biology major in undergrad. And instead, when people asked him what he was going to do with that major, and he explained the cellular and molecular biology, people oohed and awed, even to my face. Whereas when instead they asked me what I was going to do with my major, I got more is and cool. And so that comparison, I realized is not okay. And no student should have to go through that comparison as each major is beneficial to society. It's just in their own way. So I took these questions and I started my own research project. Um, now I have three definitions that are really important to point out throughout this research that can get a little confusing, but all relate to one another. The first definition is a stereotype. So we think we all know what stereotypes are, but ultimately they're just groupings of individuals based on these common characteristics that they have. Where on the other hand, a stigma, our second definition, is the concept of purposefully ostracizing an individuals due to their negative stereotypes. So we experience stereotypes in our everyday life, but when the stereotype becomes a stigma is when we get to our third definition here, which is shaming. Shaming is the process by which an individual is led to feel purposely bad due to their stigmatized characteristics. So whether that is you are a liberal arts major and now we want you to feel bad about it because we think healthcare and STEM are more important or whatever that looks like in your life, we know that shaming is not okay. 
Um, and so it was really interesting for me to do this research to find out where these ideologies come from. So I proposed some research questions to Dr. Rick. Um, and the first question that we wanted to identify is, first off, what are the stereotypes that exist among those liberal arts and STEM majors? I narrowed it down to these two majors specifically, as both in my own experience, I see that liberal arts are often receive, you know, recipients of the shaming side, whereas STEM majors, there's typically a different reaction. Now, my second question here is, okay, if there are stereotypes that exist, how are we communicating these stereotypes into stigmas? And then last but not least, my third question is when students are experiencing these stigmas, how are they managing these stigmas themselves? So for my methods, I asked students in introductory communication courses to participate in focus groups. So the first steps for these students was to complete a Qualtrics survey where they would answer basic demographic questions um, really about themselves and what their major was, and then that would allow them to sign up for that focus group time. Now, I ended up with 28 participants, 13 of which were STEM and healthcare fields, 11 liberal arts, one student was in business, and then three were in undecided. Now, after completing my data, I used thematic analysis to really analyze this data, which consisted of me having um, transcriptions of all the focus groups and really looking for common themes that correlated to these research questions. So now to the fun part. So to answer research question one, it's what were the stereotypes that existed within these two fields? And I tell you, even though I expected it, I was just as shocked as you were to find that STEM was stereotyped as words such as necessary, dedicated, male dominated, impressive, and overall of benefit to society. Whereas on the other hand, as liberal arts majors, we're stereotyped with being easier and overall having little career and financial opportunities. So we know that this is not necessarily true, especially if you are in a liberal arts field, you know that you're putting in just as much work, unlike maybe being in a lab for four hours, maybe you're writing for four hours. So I was interested to examine my second research question, which is where are these stereotypes coming from and who is communicating them as stigmas? So I found that our number one perpetrator of who is spreading these stigmas is our family and our society. So whether that be parents having a say and wanting to push their students towards healthcare and STEM and giving them that reason. Uh, but most importantly, and I found most interesting, is that participants themselves were also communicating this stigma. So it almost created a stigma cycle. So our families and society are telling us what is easier and what is more beneficial to society. And then on the other hand, participants themselves would do one of two things. They would either perpetuate the stigma by saying all majors are equal, but clearly STEM is better off, or these students would go and challenge the stigma by saying, well, STEM is better, but I guess liberal arts is important too. Now, when these students were faced with these stigmas, they responded by managing their communication in one of three ways. So our first way is avoiding. So these were the students that were challenging that that stigma applies to themselves, but they were accepting the public stigma. So these were the type of students in liberal arts that were saying, you know, I work hard in my English major. However, I understand that, yeah, English is a little bit easier. So even though I work hard, this stigma still exists. Now, my second group of students were deniers. So they would actually go out of their way to deny and challenge that that stigma applied to both themselves and challenging the public stigma. So they would go out of their way to not only explain that this stigma should not exist because they work very, very hard in their major and they know all of their friends in that major work hard, but they would go throughout a form of almost education by explaining why it was or wasn't true. And then last but not least, my third group here is my reducing offensiveness group. Um, so these were students that would accept that the stigma applied to themselves by saying things like, I know I'm a communication major and it's pretty easy for me, 
However, they would challenge the public stigma by saying, you know, while this is easier for me, it's not necessarily easy for everybody. Um, so I have an easier time and that's great, but for everybody else, this stigma still exists. And what I found really fascinated me. Um, so I created this idea of the stigma cycle. And we start up here at the top with our idea of societal stereotyping. So first and foremost, we hear these stereotypes. We hear that liberal arts is easier. We hear that STEM is more necessary, more male driven. Um, so our stereotypes really start this cycle. And within stereotypes, whether it's a student themselves, a faculty, an administrator, or their family, um, we get these stigmas. You know, we get this ostracizing of individuals. We have groups of, you know, STEM majors as a club, but maybe not as many liberal arts majors. And then within the stigmas, we get the shaming aspect. You know, for all of you that raised your hand that you've ever felt judged or shamed based on your response to that, what are you going to do with your major question? The shaming aspect is primarily where that comes in. So you have these stereotypes, you know they exist. Stigma is then spread, and that creates this idea that I should feel negative about it. Now, when a student is shamed, they react in, once again, one of those three ways by managing their stigma. For my students that were avoidant, these students accepted that stigma, both for themselves and for everybody else. And through accepting the stigma, these were the students that would perpetuate that stigma cycle by continuing to spread it, by saying, yes, I guess all majors are easy, but clearly, even if I am not a STEM major, clearly STEM is more important. So they just continued this cycle of stereotyping. However, my students that were my active deniers by challenging the stigma and going out of their way, or my students that were working to reduce offensiveness, these two students were going out throughout a form of education. And they were working to end that stigma cycle by challenging the stigma, explaining how it's not true, and educating people on exactly what they can do with that major and what plans they have for their life. So ultimately here, whether we are a student, a faculty, an educator, the big question is, what can we do to end this stigma cycle? Well, I have a few resources for you all, so we will all be prepared to do so once we leave the room today. The first one, which is the key to ending this stigma cycle, is education. So whether this is you as a faculty or administrator being able to educate students and parents on these major and career options so that way they know if they are a communication major that they have so many opportunities in front of them. Or if it's you as a student and you know what you want to do with your life and why that major is so important, you going out of your way to be able to educate others on what you plan to do helps stop and challenge this stigma cycle. The second thing that we can do is question the stigma cycle as we hear it. So this is almost a form of education, but it takes it a step further. So let's say you're walking through the halls, um, and even as an adult, as an administrator at USI, unfortunately, we hear comments that, oh, you know, liberal arts majors, maybe they're working a little bit easier. And especially in the nursing and health professions, you may hear this stigma cycle as well in the opposite end, where we know that STEM majors maybe have it a little bit more difficult. So as you hear this stigma cycle, whether it's with friends or colleagues, going out of your way to be able to question their range of thinking by saying, why do you think that? And actually going a step further and then questioning and educating them, that goes a long way to ending this cycle. Now, the third step that we can take to end this cycle is encouraging our parents, whether that is our parents as a student to keep that open mind or as a faculty or administrator of prospective students. Encouraging parents to keep that open mind and let students choose for themselves what their passion is and what they want to major in. And also reassuring them that there are plenty of job opportunities after graduation. That is one third of the way to end that stigma cycle. And then last but not least is urging your academic institution in them themselves to develop programs to promote this idea of career exploration. So even here at USI, we have the University Division Center for Exploring Majors, where students can be an undecided major and they can explore all options before they make that commitment on what their major is going to be. Programs like these are great and students should use them more and faculty should encourage students that kind of don't know what they want to do a little bit more as well.
So our key takeaways from this study was that despite some limitations, this study produced really important data about what college students in undergraduate education are going through as they make their college major decision. While that decision should be a fun one, one where students identify what their passions are, it ends up having all of these multifaceted layers on top about societal stigmas and what students should or shouldn't do as far as their major. The second key takeaway is once again, remember education is the key to ending this stigma cycle. So going out of your way to educate others on what career opportunities you can have in the liberal arts will show people that that is not an easier major and that there are many opportunities after graduation within that field. And then last but not least, just some future research that I hope to take on in my doctorate of education program. Um, would love to look into first generation students in specific just because these first generation students don't have as much parental pressure on them. Um, I'm a first generation student myself, and I know my parents had no idea what I was going to do in college, so they just kind of let me do whatever. Whereas I know a lot of STEM majors maybe have that parental pressure to get a good job, to be in a good paying position, um, and so it'd be really interesting to kind of examine the differences in these type of students. In addition to examining the idea of imposter syndrome and just looking at how exactly this cycle affects administration. Um, are administrators the one that are helping kind of create this stigma cycle or what administrators can do more specifically to end this cycle? And with that, I thank you all to listening to this research of mine and I open any questions that you all have about this research. Guess I answered them all. Even more. <laughs> no questions for Sean? Yeah, of course. So I know this wasn't one of your research questions, mm -hmm. but that would be interesting nice to hear your thoughts on why communication may be perceived as less difficult. Mm -hmm. Considering you know, the number two fear among most people is public speaking, right? So yes. it's like one of the most difficult areas. And I think that falls right behind learning to right? So Right, so, definitely. <laughs> it's the number one. Right. So, why, where do you think the origin is yes. of, uh, of, of that society, or societal or familial mm -hmm. assumption that communication or orientation that matter would be the easier? Yeah, I've done a lot of thinking on that exact question, hoping that somebody would ask it. So, thank you. Um, so, what I think it actually stems from is that communication is all around us when we're born right? We immediately, as a baby, start to learn how to communicate both non-verbally and verbally. Whereas all these other fields, such as STEM, they become a little bit less common. So whenever you first go to college and you're in your first year, if you were taking STEM classes, it's kind of like you're thrown into the deep end of a world that you've never experienced. It's almost like taking a foreign language. Whereas a lot of people see communication as easy because they either don't understand it or like a lot of the other liberal arts, this thought process is something that we actually practice more often than others. So because it's more common, because we know English, we know communication, you know, we start to think more philosophically, it becomes more of something that's just seen as an, oh, that's an easy major, we'll move on. Um, and in addition to that, I think also the idea of being in a lab, you know, that seems intimidating for a lot of people because their science time for these STEM and healthcare majors are more structured. Um, so people immediately see them publicly in the lab setting, whereas what they don't see is all the hours that our liberal arts majors are putting in, maybe in their own dorm, in the library. They're just a little less structured and a little less public. Um, I'm a huge component of your passion is going to make things easier as well as your experience with that field. And just because we have more experience with some of these other fields, I think people perceive it as easier. I think you're kind of alluding to this, and it, maybe it's just kind of like continue to look into it. Um, but I guess my question was, and maybe you know the answer, if not, compile it away for even okay. deep research <laughs> possible, is what, what are you or what's the literature defining as easy or difficult in courses? Is that the grades? Is it the experience? Is it the job later? Do you have information on how would you define easy or difficult related to these majors? 
That's a great question. Um, we didn't define that in the scope of this research. So I definitely think that would be something to look for in the doctorate program that I'm in right now. Um, what we were defining it as is more like student perception. Um, so I do think with grades comes like a tricky one, especially as an advisor. Um, a lot of students will come to me and say, oh, my introductory communication class, it's so easy. And then I notice they get an F. And they'll tell me it's because I didn't put the effort in. So I do think for what we did in the scope of this research, it's more like on students' perception of what they feel is easy or difficult. Um, I think grading kind of goes into a little bit difficult because, you know, maybe they're passing by the skin of their teeth or maybe they think something is easy when instead it's just because they're not putting in work. Any other questions? I wonder also about, you know, the nature of higher ed curriculum mm -hmm. with you know, the liberal arts primarily comprising a general education curriculum mm -hmm. for three nine that is introductory level courses. And then you get to your major and you do more detailed things and it's more challenging. But I, I think as educators, we need to do a better job of forming students why that foundation in the core curriculum, which is entirely liberal arts based is critical to success in the family disciplines or in their health administration, health care, uh, whatever the profession is created by people. Definitely. And I always tell my students, try and go a day in your life without communicating and like it's impossible. Um, so that's something that it's around every day. It's very present and they don't understand that it's the core of what they're going to learn with everything else. Yes. So um, I think there are a couple things, you know, in terms of why communication. I'm pretty sure no student ever said, no, in that class, it's just easy. Can you hear me? Yeah, <laughs> microphone that I'm using online. Like, oh, online. online. Okay, I'll do it. Um, so one of the things is what you exactly said, that communication is something that we always do. We take it for granted. But we don't often distinguish whether or not we're doing it well. Mm -hmm. And so that's some of it. And then I think another part of the perception is that communication tends to be very project-based, whether it's a radio television program or journalism or comp studies or PRA. Uh, it tends to be very project-based. So when you think of traditional assessments where you're taking a test or taking a quiz in that very sort of concrete way, mm -hmm. students often will think, oh, this is a little bit easier because I'm actually doing something, uh, not really thinking through the kind of learning and challenge associated with that. And then I'd say the third thing, especially with when you're talking about college students, is that communication, with the exception of radio, television, and journalism, they're also sort of discovery fields. So people don't really think that human communication is something one studies. Uh, and so there's also that kind of perception that might have an impact on it as well. But very nice job. Thank you. Please join me in congratulating the